Hello there. One of my favorite parts of this channel has been being able to test and look at really interesting brewers, both ones that are very recent and kind of like innovations in technology and also some fun older ones. And that's the category that we have here today. I have kind of an interesting thing that was kind of the, the first of its type when it was created. And I think you all will really enjoy it because I personally, I, I'm tickled by it. So uh, with that being said, let me go get it. This lovely metallic thing right here is called a balance brewer, and it is very, very similar to something you might actually already be familiar with. So do you recognize this? Uh, <laughs> this right here is a siphon brewer. We talked about this a couple months ago. These are still fairly popular in the coffee world. Uh, you don't see them a ton in shops ever, but this is a fun kind of a novelty brewer. And it works by using um, steam and also kind of like a vacuum to move your grounds and your water together and train transfer between the brewing and the heating process. Usually you will have some sort of like fire or alcohol burner underneath uh, that causes the water to boil and it's a fun kind of sciencey looking project. I said project, I meant brewer. <laughs> Although I, I do think making coffee is a little bit of a project sometimes. Uh, and it is definitely a project with this thing because it kind of takes the idea of a siphon brewer and expands on it. And it also automates it a tiny bit. Now siphon brewers were created kind of around the mid 1800s, like the 18 1930s and 40s, and this came a little bit afterwards. Interestingly enough, this is one of the first kind of like fully automatic brewers for the most part. And of course, automatic for its time, but this is the kind of thing that you can kind of just set it and leave and come back and your coffee is ready. And it's done through a, a pretty nifty process. Now on the siphon, the two primary chambers that the brewing happens in are stacked on top of each other. Figure I should grab this so I can show you. So you have your two main chambers. This down here is where your water is going to be boiled at. And then up here is where your coffee is going to be seated and where the full immersion brew is gonna happen. You'll notice on this one, on the balance brewer, that those two chambers are not stacked. They're actually set side by side to each other. Over here on this side, I mean, obviously, because we have the, the nice little burner underneath, this is where the water is going to be heated. And then once it's heated, it's gonna be pushed through this little like little piping right here into this side. We're gonna be putting our ground coffee in here. It's going to brew as kind of an immersion brew. And then once the heat is off, once the coffee has brewed, it's then gonna be pushed back through this tunneling over to this side where we'll serve it. This little thingy down here, this weird kind of bulbous shaped end and this is actually a metal filter and then around it, it has a cloth filter that's in place. So then when that coffee is finally sucked back up, you don't get all those like little particles and fines and grounds also in your final beverage. So all in all, very siphony like. However, I did mention it's automated and it's automated in kind of a cool way. This right here is on kind of a balance point. And what happens is that when you fill this with water, obviously it's heavier, it drops down. Why this is important is that when you turn your flame on, you wanna have have this little cap lifted. As you can see down here, that's the little wick for the alcohol burner. And then when this has water in it, it is low enough that the cap doesn't close, meaning that flame stays on. Then during the process of all that water transferring over to the brewing side, this lifts and the flame is kind of automatically turned off, which is very cool. <laughs> it's a simple idea, but it works really well. So I'm really excited to brew with this and I think we should just get started because we can, we can talk more about it as we go. Now, uh, I'm gonna go get myself some coffee and some water, which are the two things we're gonna need. And while I go do that, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessies for quite a while and they've very much become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from my work to my everyday. You've seen me wear their weekend model all the time due to its low profile and comfortable fit, but they also just released their everyday move slip-ons, which have a sportier look with the same enhanced comfort and breathability as all their other shoes. However, we do have to talk about my favorite part of these shoes since somehow Oregon is still in its rainy season. And that favorite part is that these Vessies are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material meaning that when spills and puddles and mistakes happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect behind the bar shoe and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern helps them remain grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself, I gotcha. Because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MORGAN. That's the link in the description and code MORGAN. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we have our water and we also have our ground 
coffee. Now, kind of the general recipe that seems to be pretty common as a starting point with the Balance Brewer seems to be using about eight grams of coffee uh, for every 100 grams of water used. So I'm gonna be using about 400 grams of water in the total brew. So we're gonna go just like a little bit up to a nice number. We're gonna do about 35 grams of ground coffee. Now this is ground just a tiny bit finer than one would for like a standard drip brewer. You also, if you would like to, could use room temperature water. This is gonna be creating quite a bit of heat underneath when we light it and it will bring it up to a boil. However, as we learned with the siphon process a couple months ago, that takes a while. That's gonna take you a good 15, 20 minutes even to bring this up to boil. So we are expediting the process a little bit. We are cheating perhaps a little bit and I do have some preheated water here. This is not brought up to a boil yet, but it is fairly close. So we're just gonna, just gonna speed along the process a bit. I do also wanna weigh out exactly how much water I'm adding. So I'm gonna pour my preheated water into this and then I will use this to very carefully pour into our top chamber. You could of course pour this directly into the top chamber. I just wanna be pretty exact about weighing out how much water I'm using. So we're we're taking the extra steps here. This is already, I would argue, a very extra, a very uh, extravagant brewer. So uh, I think it is justified in taking these extra steps. Kind of adds to the overall ambiance and experience. I really don't know how I already spilled coffee on the counter, but that's fine. Now we just pop this lid off. Our coffee, again, our dry ground coffee just goes on this side. Just kind of loosely in there. We'll kind of spin it a little bit just to settle that a tiny bit. Lid back on. And then over here we have this little, this little knob that comes off. And when you unscrew this knob, you have a nice little hole you can, whoops, you can just pour your water down into very carefully. And as you can see, this side is now weighted heavier and it's dropping down. Now you may have noticed this, and this is my favorite part of the entire brewer because this is a coffee spigot, <laughs> which is a very fun thing to say. Once our coffee is entirely finished brewing, uh, we will be able to actually just turn, I'm not gonna turn it now because there's water in here, but we will be able to turn this knob and we'll just have lovely coffee flowing out of our almost like party punch style spigot here. Very exciting, very looking forward to that. Um, however, having used this a couple times, and I think this is just kind of a fault of the manufacturer of this specific model, this tends to be a tiny bit leaky it's not super significant as to really affect the brew, but I do recommend you put your cup you're planning on drinking out of in front of this, just so if it does drop, you're avoiding getting just hot water on your countertop. But I think that's the entire setup. We have to make some fire now. My favorite part of any sort of siphon brew. Now, again, this is weighted, so it's not gonna stay open. You'll have to hold it open as you light it. We're gonna sneak this under, let it sit right there. And then I pretend like I know how to use a lighter. Our burner is on and now we wait. Generally, um, this will take about three to four minutes if you're using already hot water. The water I put in here, I believe was at about like 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So a little bit under a boil, we'll just give it a couple minutes and then we'll start to see water move from this chamber over to this one. It's very exciting, I can't wait. If you know anything about me, um, it's probably that I, I do like the aesthetics of my brewers. I'm a, I'm a big fan of brewers that are interesting looking and really pretty. And I, I have to say this one is, this one's very pleasing to me. Even before I had brewed with it for the first time or even like tasted the coffee, I felt like I was a little biased just cause I liked looking at it so much. It's definitely kind of a, a luxurious brewer. It's a little bit flamboyant. It's very shiny and metallic and like lots of moving parts and stuff. And uh, that's delightful. Also, while we wait for our water to move over. I will note that I will have the listing of this brewer down in the description below. Not sponsored, not an affiliate link, nothing like that. Just for your own edification or curiosity if you'd like to actually see what this looks like when listed online. Now we are starting to hear kind of the, the tinkle of boiling water for lack of a better word, which means that very, very soon uh, water is gonna start gathering here. Actually, I can see that starting to happen right now. Start to see a little bit of that bubbling right around the edge here. You also see a lot of steam starting to accumulate. We're starting to see that really visible rise of water. And as you see this start to rise, you will also notice on this side, this water side will start to lift as well, which will ultimately allow this cap to drop and the flame to be closed. I'm a little bit bummed that this is not the final vessel that the, <laughs> the coffee ends up sitting in because drinking out of this looks wonderful. However, if you were to drink out of this at this point, you would just get a mouthful of grounds, which is not, not what I imagine most people like. I'm sure there is, there's always someone who likes that, but. 
now that we have all of our water up top, if you will notice over there, you'll start to see a drop. Okay, very quickly now you will start to see this water level begin to decrease. And that means that all of this final brewed coffee is being pushed back through that cloth and that metal filter back into our final serving chamber now. No longer the water heating chamber, it's the serving chamber. And you can just see this visibly happening. It goes very quickly. And then for my most favorite part, the absolute best part of this machine, the spigot. This makes me so unbelievably happy. <laughs> we'll stop it right there, do a quick turn. And here is our final cup of brewed Balance Brewer coffee. Kind of a mouthful. I imagine <laughs> it should be shortened to something a little bit more, a little bit more concise. However, just visibly looking at this, I can already tell that this is a very clean cup of coffee. Something I have run into in the past with traditional siphons, as well as a lot of like immersion brewers, is you really get that like kind of chewy, that little bit of like that grainy mouthfeel. Like think, think like, like a French press, honestly. That doesn't seem to be happening here, which I think is a really nice testament to the cloth filter that they're using. So that's great, very, very nice. I will also note that immediately upon serving, this is very, very, very hot coffee. Remember, we are brewing this at basically a boil, so uh, it does need some cooling time. Now, there are definitely some downsides to this brewer, and I think the primary one, at least for me, ends up being the flavor of your final brew. Now, I was using a light coffee. This is a, a light roast, like African coffee. Like it's pretty bright, pretty floral, um, very, very delicious. Um, and a lot of those kind of more delicate notes kind of get like burned out of the coffee, for lack of a better word. When you are using a drip brewer or a pour over, generally the, the range of temperature of water you're brewing with is between 195 degrees Fahrenheit and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a good deal under boiling. However, when you are using a burner like this, you are bringing this up to a full boil, which means your coffee is uh, kind of scalded. Like it, uh, it just goes through a lot more than a regular brew. And unfortunately that frequently means that your flavors aren't gonna be as soft. They aren't gonna be as delicate. You're gonna get a much more kind of like homogenized, just like darker coffee flavor, which uh, isn't all always my preference, but if you added cream to this, I would have zero complaints. So it's a little bit of like a, what is your intention for this coffee? Do you want to drink it on its own? Do you want to really enjoy like a, a very soft coffee? In that case, this probably isn't the brewer for that. But if you're looking to make something that's perhaps a little bit darker, if you are looking to make something that you'll be adding things to it, I think then it works quite well. The only other kind of major downside to this that I would say is that it is a little bit laborious to clean. This Carafe over here definitely needs to be clean. You need to clean this part, which is really hard to kind of get into because there's like only two entry points. You kind of have to slosh water around. There's just a lot of moving pieces, but that's a, uh, I think pretty clear going into this. And unfortunately, even though it is technically automated in kind of a rudimentary sense, there is a lot to do with this brewer. It's very hands-on. There's lots of bits and pieces and steps that you as the, as the barista, <laughs> as it is, need to take on. And additionally, I don't necessarily recommend that you actually treat this as an automated brewer because the idea of leaving just an open flame in your kitchen, even though it in theory will be closed off at a certain point, I think is a little bit sketchy, like a little bit dangerous, like you should probably stick around while this is brewing. That being said, I am still very, very, very delighted by this brewer. I think it's super fascinating to see kind of the history of where we have started with coffee brewers and kind of where we're going. A lot of the advancements uh, in brewing and in brewers nowadays comes from kind of a technology standpoint, which is very, very cool. But it's neat to see stuff like this that was advanced through a very like tactile and hands-on advancement of like using balance and weight to make things work better. It's really nifty. It's really cool and I'm glad you could be here with me for this. Again, I am mostly bedazzled by this coffee spigot. I think this is the best thing in existence. And if all of my brewers could have coffee spigots, I would be a much, much happier person. <laughs> but that being said, this was a fun time today. This is a very, very cool kind of relic that you don't see too often anymore. But if you do happen to see one or have the chance to try one or buy one, I highly recommend you do so. They're very nifty. And I hope you feel inspired that you too could now brew on it very, very easily. But that 
that being said, I think I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my, uh, my little cup of coffee I've made, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. As usual, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere I'm active on. You can find me here on YouTube pretty much every week. You can also find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every day. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.